Well, we want to thank uh, Brother Cedric Farrell for the first half of our program, Amen. our segment today, talking about the 5,000 role model. And uh, they need mentors. They need uh, uh, part-time teachers. Uh, and for all men to come out and to, to the meeting on uh, Tuesday at 6 o'clock at Lakewood Elementary in the Coquina Key area. So we're going to begin part two of our program today with my other special guest, my brother in Christ, author and minister, Michael Bryant. Uh, Michael has been on a, quite a few of my radio programs. Uh, one of the reasons why is I just can't get enough of his ministry from the true word of God. And what he's going to share today with you is um, a conference that he has coming up about the way, the truth, and, and uh, the wife he, relationship uh, and marriage conference that's coming up, I think, on September the 3rd, I believe it is. So uh, without further ado, uh, Minister Michael Bryant. Michael, so glad to have you today again in the studio with me. Very glad to be here. <laughs> Tell us about here. the way, the truth, and the wife. What is that all about? Well, we know that the, Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. Oh, you just changed the L out for a hey. W? Because <laughs> <laughs> I found that it, it is only in him and by him you can deal with the other one. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I just caught on to that. <laughs> it came to me quickly like, oh. You know, uh, and the the premise came because when I, you know, marriage like anybody is going to be rough starting out. And uh, I remember in the beginning, I used to cry out to God like in the Old Testament. I'm like, ah, oh, Lord, <laughs> this woman's bringing bringing the worst out of me. God was like, that. That's why I have it with you. I'm trying to get the worst out of you, so I can dwell in you for what I want to accomplish through you. Mm. And you ain't gonna be able to get out of her what I can't get out of you. Mm. So you know, since you're getting mad. You know, try to get out of somebody else on the side. Uh huh. You know, your success with her is based upon my success with you. And uh, we look back in Genesis where we see that man was formed in, uh, in the image of likeness of God. Woman was formed in the likeness, but different image. With well, image, but different likeness. So that she will always be a reflection of how her man appears before God. So it's like two mirrors, you know, and if you don't like what your reflection, you know, change and reflection will change also. Mm -hmm. That's what I had to do. Um, and, and these are things, so the reason why this is so important, this is our fourth conference, but in order to have healthy children, we have to have healthy homes. Right. Oh, yes, Lord. In order for us to have healthy homes, we have to have re healthy relationships. A lot of times you can have, you can actually have a good spouse and have a bad marriage. Yes. You know, you, you love the Lord, she love the Lord, but just for some reason, you just... Y'all can't so click. Just, yeah. Just, just can't get it together. It together. Uh -huh. And uh, there's a scripture in Corinthians where Paul says, dwell with her according to knowledge. In other words, it's not enough for you to have passion. Passion without knowledge is blind. You must, God is already telling us up front, look, you need to know what you're doing. And since three out of four divorces are initiated by the wife, and it should behoove us you know, to find initiated out. Initiated by the wife? Yes. Okay. Three out of four divorces. Yeah, I think you're probably right about that. The only reason I said that is because he'll let it go on as long as he want to. If you just keep putting up with things. And so divorce is probably not even the things because he think you got it made. See, it, in my experience, a man usually don't want care because I do a lot of marital counsel here. Yes. A lot of times a man, we do, it like, we do marriage like our breaks. You wait till you hit a road for you decide you're going to get checked out. And a lot of times a man will wait till she about to leave. Like, hey, bro, man, can you come talk? Why oh, don't you wait till you're trying to leave? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, usually by that time, it's already done. It's, it's, done. It's, yeah, it's uh, pretty damaged by I often it. tell men all the time when their wife says, yes, so I do. She says to herself, he's the one that's going to make me happy. And if your conduct keeps saying, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not, then the day will come when you will convince her. That you're not the one. Mm. And then at that point, there's absolutely nothing you can do. Exactly. Wow. You know, we can pry, cry, speak in tongues, sling. <laughs> 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 it's not, it's not, That's right. It's Once not, our minds are made up, we're done. That is mm -hmm. I'm telling you. And so, a, a lot of times, though, where what's lacking is understanding. Uh, there are so many different ways that 
Uh, men and women turn each other off without even trying. You know, and so and there's lacking of understanding how each one interprets love and life differently. Um, like I said, uh, with my wife, you know, our marriage is like everybody else. You know, we struggled in the beginning because I was trying to love her. I know how to love. The ego man love. Mm. You know? It worked for me, <laughs> but it was doing absolutely nothing for her once the honeymoon period was. Now, when yes. the honeymoon period was on, and I'm doing everything for my ego, she seemed impressed. Yes. But then and when then the, that uh, soon wore out. Yeah, when the honeymoon period <laughs> wore, I'm still running the same show. You know, what I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm, I'm losing ratings. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, you know, she was showing you the dough, wasn't she? But see, the thing <laughs> is, uh, and we often talk about how men and women uh, interpret intimacy different. To men, intimacy has something to do with sex, but to women, intimacy has absolutely nothing to do with sex. The intimacy means basically, into me, he sees. You know, that has absolutely nothing to do with sex. Uh, but because men love from the outside inward and women love from the inside outward, Out. yes. intimacy is to women is, do you see me? Because a woman is not going to stay in a relationship where you love her, but you don't know her. Of all the years I've been doing marital counseling, uh -huh. it always comes to the same thing. One time I was counseling grandparents, and I said, uh, uh, what's wrong? She said, <laughs> he, look, the husband says, you don't know me. He's frustrated. He's in the late 70s. He said, what you mean I don't know you? We got children and grandchildren. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he's, she said, I'm not saying you don't. Love me, but you, you don't, don't really know, know me. me. Mm. You don't know yes, me. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. And there's a whole lot of men, married men, going to bed every night with a, next to somebody you don't even know. That's true. Now we, that's I true. know that's, that's true. That's true. And you wonder why you wake up and she's staring at you, you know what I'm saying? Because she's looking at you saying, how come you don't know me? That's right. Because in a woman's mind, if you don't know how I feel, it's not possible that for you, you to love know me. me. Right, that right. You don't love me, yeah. you don't know me. And one thing that women have in common with God is seeing come by hearing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't hear her, then you don't see her. That's right. And she's in, she feels invisible in her own house. And before you know it, she's gone. So I should have guessed that from my mom because my mom would be like, she'd come home and like we didn't do anything she asked us to do. She's like, it's like I'm not here. It's like, yeah, I'm just leaving you here with your daddy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, I don't, I don't even know why I'm here. You know, I was like, well, mom, what are you talking about? It's because everything that was so important to her, we, it was not important to us. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. And so we didn't know what that communicated to her, that how you feel doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, you know, a lot of stuff I, I've learned from the doghouse, you know, because <laughs> I'm hard headed. You know? <laughs> so now you just really want to help some other guys out there and women. The women and men. And to have, you know, yes, because there's yeah. there's a lot of things. And uh, uh, when you combine, you know, behavior science um, with what God teaches us. And that's an uh, unusual bridge because most people who do pastoring don't really understand the soul. Because in uh, the old church ways, uh, the soul was just something that just survived physical death to go to heaven or hell when you die. You know, like a driver's side airbag. You know, so when you die now, you got to be concerned where's your soul going to go. But the word soul comes from the Greek word psyche or suke, where we get the word psychological. Mm -hmm. The soul is the psychological part of our being and is a now functioning part of who we are. And though men and women are created spirits, psychologically, we're wired differently. And that's why we have our issues. We're wired differently, so we interpret love and life differently. Does that make sense? Yes. Of we do. Not, we not, do. Not. As they said, you know, just like I guess I heard one time, they said like, well, yeah, men are physical and women are just uh, emotional. To, emotional. To yeah. those, we don't mean y'all just crazy now, because usually when you say women reason with emotion, they get offended. Like, I'm not emotional. emotional. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, we are. We just, uh, I guess you could be with somebody one day and saying the next day you're saying you love them. And men are be saying, are, are you out of your mind? No, mm -hmm. I don't know. In love, you know, it's just something to do or something. I think women typically fall in love first. Yes. Uh, do you uh, think so? Well, they say that in marriage, uh, a man marries hoping she will never change. He marries, she married hoping that he will. You know, and that's the problem. When men, we marry hoping you, you'll just stay just like this. Mm -hmm. And women believe in hope. 
Hoping that, that yeah, he let's see, change. hoping that he will change. Uh, now, that's true. I, I, I experienced that in my first marriage. I really did. It was like some things that were done before you even married him. And then I was married and it's like, oh, okay, hopefully he'll change. And all I got is more of the bad stuff when I did marry Right. <laughs> that's right. But, so you did. But what we want to expose at this conference, first, for, I mean, be able to find out who we are. And uh, one thing Dr. Miles Monroe said is, if you don't know the purpose of the thing, it's inevitable that you will abuse it. So if you don't know what the purpose of marriage is, how do you know if it's working? You know, marriage will, God designed marriage to bring us closer to who he is and who he called us to be. Um, so here you have, uh, according to uh, uh, Genesis 127, both male and female created in the image of God, in the image of like, likeness of God. You have Colossians 116 that says that Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. So both male and female are created in his image and likeness. However, there are two different aspects to his being. Jesus is called the lion, and he's also called the lamb. He's called the lion because just as the lion is king of the jungle, Jesus is king of kings. Yes, right. There's a part of him that I call objective or part of management. According to John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, Word was with God, Word was fully God. So it was parting him on the outside working. But then there's a different aspect of his being we call subjective because there's a part of him that's submissive. The lamb is the most submissive creature in the earth, quiet to the slaughterhouse, just like Jesus is all the way to the cross. Mm. So we see an aspect of his being that's completely subjective and submissive to God. That's what we see in the Gospels when Jesus said, my father told me what to say and how to say it. I came to do the will of him that sent me, not my will, but thy will be done. So there's an objective aspect to him that leads, and there's a subjective aspect to him that follows. So what God decided back in eternity past, I'm going to create mankind in such a way that will show both sides of my son. I'm going to create one half in the objective image to lead and the other half in the subjective image to follow. Neither is greater or lesser in value. Because it is when you put them both together that you see the image of God. Then it will be in the earth as it is in heaven. So I noticed like with my wife, the more I love her, it opens up my subjectivity. I hear mm. differently. And when she loves me and pushing past all my little stuff, she gains objectivity before God. Because women typically are nonlinear. Men are lineal. That's why I call it one track minded. One track. But women Just are, black and white. But women are non linear and tend yes. to be everywhere. <laughs> but plugged into me, she gains objectivity before God and she's able to prophesy and be able to see God as he's moving subjectively in our house. Mm -hmm. And my love with her makes me more subjective. I hear her different and cause me to hear God differently and what he's doing in our house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why Paul said, now if y'all got this here together, maybe you could be an elder in the church. Mm -hmm. but see, we've been sacrificing this house to go tend to the church house instead of the other way around. What's going on at the right. church house should support this house. Right, Make right. This house better. Mike, I got a question for you. Um, you know, we're talking about the way, <clears throat> the truth, and the wife. Um, and you know it's all based on um, a spiritual foundation or right. it's having... God in our mm -hmm. lives, in our uh, looking towards God, to lead and guide us. He is the foundation, the spiritual foundation in our household, and we look to Him for every anything that comes up. Can um, before I have Laquanda come up, I want to know: Is there, and then you announce where the event is? I want to know: Is there any way a marriage can work without God being in the center? Oh uh, well, well, here's the thing: is mm. the thing is. Of that well, basically, what I've I've not seen it now. No, I can't see. I've seen because you know you can't have harmony without order. That's right. You know, without order, all you have is chaos. You know, mm -hmm. with a, God is a God of order. That's right. That's why everything that we see in the you know as far as the, what we call laws of nature, you know, who you think set those laws in effect? Mm -hmm. Those laws, what we call laws of nature, are merely an outward expression of an inward reality that man is not in nature is not able to oppose God. Yes. Man is the only thing that God created that is able to oppose him. Mm. And therefore, he finds himself with no harmony. See, typically what man does, see, God is the only being that is self-harmonious. He don't have to line up with anybody or That's anything right. to find harmony. He ain't got to go to church. You know, so he, ain't gotta, he don't need a pastor. He don't need an elder. He is self-harmonious. 
man is not. Mm -hmm. And typically, man think if I can find the right wife and the right job and the right kids with the right boss with the right president and the right Congress, then I'll have harmony. That's <laughs> you know right. That's right. Now realizing that it's his life, his walk with God that brings harmony to his house mm -hmm. and to his life. And so without God, God brings the harmony. See, we're trying to, all romance is, is man's yes. attempt at harmony from his natural proclivity, which, you know, I, see, Hollywood tried to do it, you know what I'm saying? Oprah <coughs> Guest tried to help us do it, but her, her helpers need help. In, uh, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> I caught that one. You know, look at all the people saying the best music, you know, Babyface saying all the love saying he, love song, he can't keep his wife either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> who do we follow? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, you know, I love, I love Steve Harvey, but you know, he on his third or fourth one. Well, that's <laughs> right. That's right. I tell people all the time, all right, now you get your life counsel from a comedian. It's your fault. Your life end up a joke. Uh, okay. <laughs> your fault. You know, he get paid. You, know, you, <laughs> you get divorced. Yes. <laughs> 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 But as you see, we do have a lot of fun at our conferences. You know, I was, I was, uh, just real quick, I was uh, talking to a sister, and she was, uh, we was outside, and this lady had her dog, and she, right behind the dog, took a mess on the sidewalk, and without missing a beat, she picked it right up and kept going. She said, how could she do that? I said, that's what you're doing. Your dog is just two-legged. That's all you're doing. Okay. God spelled backward is what? Dog. 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 You know what I'm saying? And you you still dealing with mess. That's right. If you're dealing with a man who has not dealt with his own mess, what do you think you're doing? That's right. You got to keep picking up mess just That's to stay falling behind. That's right. That's, That's right. Is that the same thing you would say about a woman? I, now, with a woman, it's, it's a trip. Um, because you're dealing with, a lot of times, the girl behind the woman. You know, a lot of the times. The girl inside. The, right. Yeah, because the reason I say that because I know if some men are listening today, they're saying, okay, he ain't saying nothing about them, them women uh, uh, planning and scheming and whatever, you that, know, that is they want to think about us. That, it, it should, now, you can, you can deal with something that is a mess because, you know, women are natural nurturers. Uh, there's a lot of things that can happen where the father drops the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, as God told me with my daughters at a very early age, he said, now you're their first contact with the opposite sex. Wow. And if that relationship is unbalanced in any way, even by your absence, mm -hmm. the other relationship with the opposite sex will be unbalanced. That's right. Uh, I believe so, that. And that's the key. And see, again, being objective and subjective, a mother's love is subjective and nurturing. A father's love is objective and empowering. And when a daughter does not have her father to speak volume and value in her life, what else does she have but her feelings to try to figure out what love is? That's right. And that's where we go looking for love in the wrong there place. There you mm. go. And you'll change by, like, I, you know, I have calluses on my hand from lifting weights. That's because that's how the body responds to pressure and friction. It forms a heart callus to protect itself. The heart works the same way. You keep dealing with relationships that take from you and don't pull back in you, a woman's heart becomes tough. You say, I'm a, I'm a strong black woman. No, you're just tough. But just like my hand, there's a loss of sensitivity where there are calluses. And you don't have the same sensitivity. And when there's a loss of sensitivity, it's going to affect your femininity. You know, and we can go down a whole different path we can talk about and what happens with that. You know, I want no man, now you want to be a man. You know what I'm saying? Because you ain't got no femininity because you've been putting up with pressure and friction with relationships you had no business in in the first place. Exactly. And then there's that toughness. And then you have to, I, 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 men intimidate me. No, you, no, they don't. You just hard. You know what I'm saying? It takes sensitivities to connect with a man on an intimate level. It means that your heart has been hardened? Yes. yes. And it, now, it, again, then when your heart has become hard, you know, so a lot of times you can, like I said, I, I don't have the same feeling here where the calluses are as I do right here where there are none. And a lot of times that affects your ability to be able to nurture as a mother. You know, at one conference, you met a sister, she says, I'm a, I'm a strong black woman. I said, no, you're just hard and tough. You know, like you and your kids in there with all that bitterness, you know, saying can't breathe and wonder why you have them problems with them. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, especially in the, I hate to say it, but the thing that damages a lot of black women is church. Mm. Because the relationship with God is supposed to be organic. It is living. God created the spirit of man to be a living habitation for Natural. himself. Natural. And without living habitation, all that does, they just decorate your little calluses, and you still ain't got no man. Mm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You can beat that tamarind better than the next person, but you still ain't got no man. 
going to that same church 20 years and eat a mosquito. He coming in the Honda and you still ain't got no man. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> well, you better tell these people about where this conference is. <laughs> <laughs> Get there, okay? Yeah. Don't, hey, what, what is that? Don't come for me now. now. Uh, <laughs> 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 it, the conference is 1800 uh, Melrose Avenue, mm. uh, right by the school. And we have a lot what of fun. Is that by Melrose? Melrose Elementary, I think. Oh, yeah, okay, yes. Yeah, okay. we, I mean, we deal with real issues, and uh, people are surprised how relevant the Word of God is to our everyday reality. And that's, that's the fault of religion. You know, for instance, when you have where um, God tells your husband, see that you love your wife, and behavioral science tells you that love is the language of women. Mm hmm. Okay, the Bible tells the wife, means make sure you reverence your husband or respect your husband. Behavioral science will tell you that respect is the language of man. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, they're not, they're right on top of one another. But we're putting them together, we found out why. Like, I noticed that if I say something uh, unloving to Kim, her response is going to be disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Yes. If yes. she says Unloving, something to me definitely. that yeah, if she says something to me that come across a little disrespectful, like you're talking to one of our sons, you know what I'm saying? My retort may be a little unloving. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So now we've matured a little bit, you know, we move past the playpen to where if she comes slick and it's a little a little disrespectful, I'll say what what did I come across is unloving. Yes. And when she says something to me and in response seeing a little tight, a little unloving, she'll say, What did I come across disrespectful? Right. So everybody just getting mad. You know what I'm saying? Feel each <laughs> other, and, and mm -hmm. that's what you're able to work from. It's like, did I? If I did, I didn't mean to. Right. right. And see, yes. and that's the thing. See now, what you can't. When when you try to do that, you're going to run into the child that is still in you. You know, my mother said when I was two, if you took something from me and tried to give it back to me, I wouldn't take it. I'd, you would like, here, my mic. I'm like, I don't want it. I don't want it. And because nobody broke me out of that. I brought that into my relationship, so we don't talk when I want to talk, <laughs> even though we should talk. Uh, I don't want to talk. You well, know? One thing that I can tell from what you're saying, when you put the time in to make things work, and like you say, you found out when uh, you thought you were uh, Mr. Casanova, oh, yeah. Kim got you straight now. <laughs> I'm impressed. She was looking at me like one of those people on the Shark Tank, just, <laughs> no, we're not buying. <laughs> Again, it's uh, September the 3rd at uh, 7 o'clock. Yeah, come early, get a good seat. Uh, also, the uh, the book, uh, The Way to Truth and a Wife, will also be available at the conference. Oh, wonderful. Uh, yes, that you is the, know how much? Uh, I can't wait. I told him I can't wait. I think $20. Okay, all easy, right. Easy. So you, you can get your book at the it conference. Kind of the kind of, look here, you invest all that money in your wedding, I know you can spend two hours and twenty dollars on your marriage. That's right. Yeah. I believe I say that again. You spend all the thousands of dollars on your wedding. I know you could spend two hours and twenty dollars on your marriage. Well you know what I'm gonna stop you right there. And the reason I'm gonna say that is you are so correct before I have uh Laquanda because I remember uh many, 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 many years ago I had got married, Embassy Suites I think it was about, could have been twelve or 13000 I might have spent on it. And uh, two months later, I say, it's over with. My brother say, you have got to be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Too late to push that payment, did he? He was sick because to, out of that, pretty much, he had paid most of <laughs> And we'd have to work some out. I, like, <laughs> I said, I don't care nothing about no, you'll get more money just like you got that. And I'm like, yeah, oh this my is god. It. This no, no, no. Please, please. No, what did I say? That this <coughs> is it. Uh-uh. I don't care nothing about no. See, see that's why we want. <laughs> see, that's why we now it's it starts at, now it, the thing is though, like with Adam and Eve, both mm -hmm. Adam and Eve messed up, but God went straight to Adam. Mm -hmm. God certainly held Eve accountable for her own sins, but he held Adam responsible for his house. He went straight to Adam, Adam, what happened? Now, that's so important for men to understand because uh, how a man has the capacity in God to save his house. Because all it is, if you look at Genesis, when the earth fell into darkness, the Bible says, God says, let there be light and the darkness receded. That's because there's no darkness in God. Darkness cannot cast out darkness. So here, I marry a wife who's cast some darkness because everything she's been through and dealt with. So we had challenged because she had more darkness than I had light. The solution is simply deal with my own darkness. This is where God comes in. 
because God is the light and there's no darkness in him. So as I'm confronting and dealing with my own darkness, I increase in light to speak into her darkness and bring our marriage to a whole nother level of elevation. So instead of us arguing and fighting in the dark, <laughs> then somebody has got to bring some light. And that's what, into it. Yeah. that's what the church does not understand. We bring religion instead of light. And then the divorce rate is actually slightly higher in the church than it is in the world. It is. Yeah, it is. Change. You know, cause I mean, like I said, we hook a aside, eat a mosquito, you coming in the Honda, and y'all still going home mad. You know? <laughs> 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 uh, I'm trying to slang it all in, throwing shade. You know, <laughs> you know what's so good about the program today? Cedric came forth with us, with us as families trying to pour into our young males. Michael coming along with relationships, yes. man and woman. We're talking about specifically. Right. Because <laughs> I asked a couple of school teachers, you know, can they tell the difference, you know, of what type of household <laughs> the kids come from? You know, because, so you know, the old rule is mom ain't happy, the house ain't happy. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's just that's been that's been proven also scientifically. Mama got and to mama be ain't happy. Ha- ain't that ain't happy. That's right. Mama happy ain't wife, happy, happy life. That's right. Especially mama with you know, especially with boys. There are the studies show that boys are the happiest not when they have all the toys or the latest clothes, but when mama happy. Yes. Okay. When mama is when happy. When mama is happy. I got sons, and you know, they judge me through how I've handled their mother. Mm. No matter what I bought, they, they don't get the PlayStation, all that stuff is fine and good. But their assessment of me, of, of what kind of dad and man I am, is based upon how I've handled their mother. That's true. Okay, see, that's good. And, that, and then what you're going to be talking about is what, Laquan? We're going to be talking about fight for our sons. I had not okay, got into see, Minister Bryant so much. <laughs> yes, too, but he, our very own Minister Bryant will be at this conference. Um, Godly Favor International Ministries is hosting its first fight for our sons, Amen. which would be August the 19th and the 20th. Um, Friday will start at 7 p.m. Saturday at 12 noon. So get er, get there early. The seats are, we're hoping no matter. Um, it is going to be... Um, our own Pastor Benjamin Rays. I love Pastor Benjamin Rays. I'm telling you, this man is so knowledgeable on in the scriptures and a very powerful man of God. We have uh, Minister Jason Macon, um, and we also have uh, Minister Grant McRae. And and what's so phenomenal about this, um, as I'm introducing a lot of these speakers, they are young in the ministry and, and knowledgeable, and I'm, I'm loving that they accept the call that God has put on their life. And we also have a, another young one, which is Andrew Pink. I, this man here, this man of God, I'm so ready to hear because not only does he come from a spiritual standpoint, they will hear it from a spiritual standpoint, but they're probably going to hear it from a political standpoint because he's an activist too. And um, we have a uh, pastor, um, Franny Mitchell, um, out of Bradenton, Florida, and we have also. Um, Pastor Marvin Bonner, who is coming way out of Evansville, Indiana. So we are very excited about this conference. This conference was something that was put inside of me um, after my son um, um, was brutally shot by an officer. And um, the God, um, you know, basically let me know that there is a call to rise our men back up to the top. Mm -hmm. Um, Our men need to know that they are the head, not the tail. You know what I mean? And they need to know that they can be CEOs. They don't have to be employees they can be lenders they don't have to be borrowers and i'm just i'm so determined um to um prove to men that it's time it, the time is now for them to take over their homes back their homes their communities their churches because this is what satan knows and because i've counted so many obstacles in this um is that he knows if the man rises back up he has he has lost the battle completely because guess what the man is taking back their daughters their sons you don't understand what i'm saying then they're getting their presence back into their communities and oh god let them get their presence back into the church this is we're going to take the world by storm ain't we tell those people where to come okay Okay, yes it's going to be at the stay bridge suites um this is downtown um right by um bayfront medical center is 940 it's the address fifth avenue south st petersburg florida um and this is august the 19th and the 20th so please come out registration is free 
Um, we also have um, some food on Saturday, not Friday, but Saturday. Um, and everything is free. We This is a empowerment and a call toward men. And, and let me know also, let you know also that the women are invited as well because we know that they have a presence in the home as well. Fighting for our sons. I'm actually, I'm actually wanted to speak. Again. Yes, yes, and that's why I'm, I'm sitting here with First my. She said you, and then I was waiting for her to say it again. That's like, okay, yes, uh, say Michael. Yes, he's gonna, be, he's gonna be there uh, giving us his uh, nuggets too. So we are excited about that. Honored. Yes. Oh yes. I am so honored There's to have him in the building. That. Yes. Um, what, so what's so important about her conference is, uh, you know, it's not possible to reform man without reinforming man. Yes. About who he is. Mm -hmm. so we've been looking at through media and it really is all part of social Beyonce is all part of social engineering uh, back in the day J.D. Rockefeller said you know we're going to unite the north to south make this country great again uh, but a chain are is you, only are strong. Are y'all planning on sharing of how not to be a man like Donald Trump? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to get that. <laughs> oh, now, God. That, that, but uh, what he said was, uh, J.D. Rockefeller said was, he says, he's, we want to educate the black man. We're going to give him just enough education, just enough to let him work trades. But we'll still run everything else. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're not really even understanding um, that we're socially engineered to stay at the bottom to be the workhorse mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and not become, you know, cooperated in with our own governing of our own selves mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things like you have Viacom there's things I'm going to talk about how Viacom which is part which is behind the, the vicious rap music but they also uh, have a hand in privatized prisons Yes, you know, and so be, there's and they a lot have of them to, have their hands and in And the that. thing is, and they have a, there's a contract where they have to keep the prisons at a certain capacity. They do, they do. And so therefore, they have you know. They have to have them filled every mm -hmm. day. Right, and that's the only way they would get into private as prisons. If you can guarantee me you'll keep the prisons 90%, well, how can you guarantee somebody's going to keep the prisons 90% full? You have a plan. You have a you plan. Have to have in a plan the third effect. and fourth grade. It's the music. It's, it's, <laughs> it starts. It's the music. They are, you'll find that the rappers who have clean music and positive music, they're not going to get the support and the backing. It's just one just pushing the poison. That's right. It's yes. All, that's it's where it started. They got you, it all. You know, when I was out. when I was young, I stopped drinking malt liquor. When I first found out that people who made it didn't drink it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. You know, I was younger. Then. I said, "You mean to tell me they're making this and they don't drink it? No. I, why would I look like uh -uh. drinking this?" Well, we are out of time here, but Cedric, one closing word before we go off the air. Um, I'd like for you to, to remind them about that uh, meeting on um, Tuesday and that address again. Okay. Uh, it's the uh, male mentoring uh, recruitment meeting. is Tuesday, August 16th, which is next Tuesday at 6 p.m. It's at Lakewood Elementary School, which is in the Coquina Key area. Uh, the address is 4151 6th Street South, St. Petersburg, Florida. And my number is 727-272-5130. My name is Cedric Farrell, and my number is 727-272-5130. Michael, your conference is? Is uh, sep September the 3rd. Uh, this is free, you know, it's free registration. Come have it. bring all your friends. You married, single, or just mad, or broke up, <laughs> divorced, separated, just come anyway. It is free. Uh, the book, The Way to Truth and the Wife, will be available. My first book, um, Losing My Religion, Gaining My Identity, is available. Uh, you can go to my Facebook page or Michael Bryan at ticktail.com. Uh, either way, but I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Uh, again, with the uh, uh, Laquanda's conference, I'll also be there as well. Excited about what God is doing in the minds and hearts of his people. Um, fight for our sons August the 19th the 20th at the Stay Bridge Suites um, 940 5th Avenue South and that's St. Petersburg Florida and also if you don't have anything to do today I will be at the Just Be a Man About conference that is 3 p.m. that's at the Clarion and, and Suites and that is 20967 U.S. Highway 19th North, and that's Clearwater, Florida. So fight for our sons August the 19th, which would be this weekend, Friday and Saturday. And I want to thank all of you today who have tuned in to Matters of the Heart Radio Ministry with your host, Princess Denise, with my special guests, uh, Minister Michael Bryan, Apostle Laquanda Everett, and Mr. Cedric Farrell. If you're interested in being a guest on my radio program at 99.1 FM Radio, please give me a call at 727 Four eight 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 one eight. Easy to remember. Four eight 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 one eight. If you like to be have a guest interview 
at this radio station for my future broadcast here. All right, you have a God blessed day until we come back before you again with our another of another broadcast from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. on 99.1 FM Jams. Have a great day.